Welcome everyone to the first ever US user conference of uh, Apache Flink, sponsored by Data Artisans, the, the creators of Flink. Uh, the conference kicked off this morning with some very high profile customer use cases, including Netflix and Uber, um, which, was, uh, which were quite impressive. We're on the ground at the Kabuki Hotel in San Francisco, and our first guest is Dean Wampler, VP of Fast Data Engineering at Lightbin. Welcome, Dean. Thank you, good to see you again, George. So, um, big picture context setting. Spark exploded on the scene, blew away the expectations even of their creators. Um, with the speed and the, and the deeply integrated libraries, um, and essentially replaced MapReduce really quickly. Yeah. So what is behind Flink's rapid adoption? Right. I, I think it's an interesting story, and if you'd asked me a year ago, I probably would have said, well, I'm not sure we really need Flink. You know, Spark seems to meet all our needs, but I uh, pretty quickly changed my mind as I got to know about Flink, because it is a broad ecosystem. There's a wide variety of problems people are trying to solve, and what Flink is doing very well is solving low latency streaming, but still at scale like Spark, where Spark is still primarily a mini batch model, so it has longer latency. And Flink has been on the cutting edge too of embracing some of the more advanced streaming scenarios like proper handling of late arrival of data, you know, windowing semantics, things like this. So it's really filling an important niche, but a fairly broad niche that people have. and. Uh, and also, not everybody needs the, the full featured capabilities of Spark, like you know, batch analytics or whatever. And so, having one tool that's focused just on processing streams is often, you know, a good idea. So, would that uh, relate to like a smaller surface area to learn and to administer? I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, Spark is incredibly well engineered and. It uh, works very well, but it's a, it's a bigger system, so there's going to be more to run, and there is something very attractive about you know having a, a more focused tool that you know less things to break basically. So, um, you're, you mentioned sort of lower latency um, and few extra a, a few fewer bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us some examples of use cases where? You wouldn't need perhaps all of the integrated libraries of Spark or the, you know, the big footprint that gives you all that resilience and, yeah. you know, um, um, the functional programming that lets you sort of recreate lineage. Mm -hmm. Tell us sort of how how a customer who's approaching this should, you know, pick the trade-offs. Right. Well, normally when, when you have a low latency problem, it means you have less time to do work. So you tend to do simpler things in okay. that time frame. But uh, just to give you a really interesting example, I was talking with a, um, a, a development team in a bank recently that does you know, credit card authorizations. You know, you click buy on a website and there's you know, maybe a few hundred milliseconds when the user is expecting a reply, right? But it turns out there's so many things going on in that loop, you know, from browser to servers and back that they only have about 10 milliseconds when they get the, 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 the data to make a decision about whether they, this looks fraudulent or looks legit and they make a decision. So, you know, 10 milliseconds is fairly narrow. That means you have to have your models already done and ready to go and, and you know, a quick way to actually apply them, you know, to take this data, ask the model, is this okay, and get a response. So a lot of it is kind of boiling down to that. It's either, I would say one of two things. Either I'm doing basic filtering, transforming of data, like you know, raw data coming into my environment, or I have some maybe more sophisticated analytics that are running behind the scenes, and then in real time, so, so to speak, data's coming in, and I'm asking questions against those models about this data, like okay. authorizing credit cards. So to recap, um, the low latency means you have to have perhaps scored your models already. Mm -hmm. Okay, so trained and scored in the background. Yeah. And then with this low latency um, uh, solution, you can look up, key-based key look up, I guess, to an uh, external mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, um, so how is Lightbend making, um, making it simple to put what essentially has to be for any pipeline, it appears, multiple you know, products together seamlessly. Yeah. 
That, that is the challenge. I mean, it would be great if you could just deploy Flink and that was the only thing you needed yeah. or Kafka or, or pick anyone up. But of course, the, the reality is we always have to integrate a bunch of tools together and it's that integration that's usually the hard part. You know, how do I know why this thing's misbehaving when maybe it's something upstream that's misbehaving, that sort of thing. Right. So we've been surveying the landscape to understand, you know, first of all, what are the tools that seem to be you know, most mature, most uh, vibrant as a community that address the variety of scenarios people are trying to deal with, you know, some of which we just discussed, and what are the kind of integration problems that you have to solve to make these you know, reliable systems. So we've been building a platform called the Fast Data Platform that's uh, approaching its first beta that is designed to help solve a lot of those problems for you so you can you know, focus on your actual you know, business problems. And, and from a, a customer point of view, would you take end-to-end -end ownership of that solution so that if they chose, you could manage it on-prem on or in the cloud and handle level three support across, across the stack? That's an interesting question. We think eventually we'll get to that point of, of more of a, of a service offering. But, yeah. but right now, most of the customers we're talking to are still more interested in managing things themselves, but not having as much of the hassle of doing it themselves. So what we're trying to balance is tooling that makes it easy to get you know, started quickly and build applications, but also uh, leverages some of the modern like machine learning, artificial intelligence stuff to automatically detect and correct for a lot of common problems and other you know, management scenarios. So at least it's not quite as you're on your own as, uh, as it could be if you were just trying to glue everything together yourself. So if I understand, it sounds like the first stage in the journey is help me rationalize what I'm trying to get to work together on on-prem. Mm -hmm. And part of that is um, using machine learning now as part of management. Mm -hmm. And then over time, this management gets better and better at root cause analysis and auto remediation, yeah. and then it can move yeah. into the cloud, and yeah. these, these disparate components become part of a single SaaS solution under the management. That, that's uh, the long-term goal, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So, um, um, looking out uh, at the, where all this act, uh, intense interest is right now in IOT mm -hmm. applications. Yeah. Um, we know that we can't really go back to the cloud for, uh, send all the data back to the cloud right. um, and get an immediate answer and then drive an action. Yeah. How do you see that uh, shaping up in terms of you know, what's on the edge and what's in the cloud? Yeah, that's a really interesting question and there are some particular challenge is because a lot of companies will migrate to the cloud in a piecemeal fashion, so they've yeah. got a you know, sort of a hybrid deployment scenario with things on premise and in the cloud and so forth. Um, one of the things you mentioned that's pretty important is I've got all this data coming in, how do I capture it reliably? So uh, tools like Kafka are really good for that, and um, for Vega that uh, Srikanth from uh, EMC mentioned is sort of filling the same need, that I need to capture stuff reliably, serve downstream consumers, make it easy to do analytics over this stream that looks a lot different than a traditional database where it's kind of data at rest. It's not static, but it's, it's not like moving. <laughs> So um, that, that's one of the things you have to do well and then figure out how to uh, get that data to the right consumer and account for all of the latencies. Like if I needed that 10 millisecond credit card authorization but I had data split over my on-premise and my cloud environment, you know, that would not work very well. So there's a lot of that kind of architecture of data flows that becomes really important. Do you see um, Lightbend offering that management solution that enforces SLAs or do you see sourcing that technology from others and then integrating it tightly with the particular you know, software building blocks that make up the, the pipeline? Uh, it's a little of both. Uh, we're, we're sort of in the early stages of um, building services along those lines. I mean, some of the technology we've had for a while, our Akka uh, middleware system and the uh, streaming API on top of it would be really good for uh, basing that kind of a, a platform that where you can think about SLA requirements and trading off you know, performance or whatever versus um, uh, you know getting, th getting answers in a reasonable time. Good recovery and error scenarios, yeah. stuff like that. So it's all early days, but we are, t we are thinking very hard about that problem because ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what 
customers care about. They don't care about Kafka versus Spark or whatever. They just care about, I've got data coming in, I need an answer in 10 milliseconds or I lose money. And that's the kind of things that they want you to solve for them. So that's really what we have to focus on. So last question before we have to go. Mm -hmm. um, do you see potentially a scenario where there's uh, one type of technology on the edge or many types mm -hmm. and then something more dominant in the, in the cloud where basically you do more training, you know, model training, mm -hmm. and out on the edge you do the low latency, you know, predict predictions or prescriptions. That's pretty much the architecture that it's emerged. I'm going to talk a little bit about this today in my talk where, like we said earlier, I, I may have a very short window in which I have to make a decision, but it's based on a model that I've been building for a while and I can build in the background with you know, where I have more tolerance for the time it takes. Up, so in think, the, up in the cloud. Up in the cloud. Actually, this is kind of independent of deployment scenario, but it could be both like that. So you could have something that is closer to the con consumer of the data, mm -hmm. so maybe in the cloud and, you know, deployed you know, in, in Europe for European customers, but it might be working with systems back in the US, say, that are doing the heavy lifting of you know, building these models and so forth. But we live in such a world where you, know, you can put things where you want, you can move things around, you can glue things together, um, and a lot of times it's just knowing what's the right co combination of stuff. And, All right, Dean, it's great to see you and to yeah. hear the story. It sounds compelling. Well, thank you very much. So this is George Gilbert. We are on the ground at Flink Forward. Uh, Data Artisans User Conference for the Flink uh, product, and we will be back after this short break.